Welcome to another edition of Talking Models. Today we're looking at this beautiful piece from Killer Kits out of England. Sculpted by Steve Thompson and it just portrays a scene I would always imagine. What would it look like for Larry Talbot to face his alter ego? In this case, the Wolfman. Well, this idea, this concept is beautifully thought out beautifully sculpted, and a must-have if you're a classic horror fan. This kit reminds me of a Janus kit. This kit, in my opinion, is going to be one that is sought after years to come. And then you'll be sorry that you didn't get it. So get out there and contact Dave Nicholson at Killer Kits and get one of these. Let's take a look at this beautiful piece. I'm going to kind of spin it around so you can take a look at it. As you see, you have Larry Talbot standing on this side of the mirror, and then you have the Wolfman coming through the mirror as he's looking in there in the shock of horror, and his cane as he's holding it up in the air with the uh, silver handle. Ooh, one way to kill a werewolf. So we'll kind of spin it around. So much going on in this. You have the mirror uh, piece, you have the base, you have the uh, shattered glass all on the bottom here. Pieces of the glass that is still up in the mirror from him busting through. Uh, there's just so much there. The detail in the Wolfman's face, the detail in Larry Talbot's face. It's all there, guys. It's all there. A beautiful 1-6 scale resin kit. And uh, like I say, a must if you're a classic horror fan. Okay, so I'm going to go through what I did with this uh, beautiful piece. Everything was base coated in black. Of course, you first put your primer on, which I always use Krylon Automotive Light Gray as my primer. Love that primer. Now, of course, uh, Larry's face and hands were left with the Gray Auto Primer. And I always enlist, this is my choice for using uh, for my base coat of black. I have used the um, primer from Badger, and I've sprayed that on before. And sometimes I do spray that on, but I always come back and go over that with this. For me and my style, it builds up the coloring and it gives you a nice base coat. So we start with this. And what I like to do is I hand brush the whole piece. Everything is hand brushed with a nice big brush. Get it all covered. Might have to do a couple times because with uh, Wolfman there's a lot of hair detail. There's a lot of detail in the hair on Larry. And you just want to make sure you get everything covered. So I'm going to start with the base. Over that black I enlisted a few colors. I use uh, Garage US Colors Transparent Burnt Umber, Transparent Yellow Orch, Transparent Dark Brown. And then I went over to the Freak Flex line and we got Road Rash Brown. Banji or Turn Ghost White, Iridescent Blue, wait, you'll find out, and then of course Transparent Payne's Gray. Now I just started out with the base, uh, basically just airbrushing that over with the uh, Transparent Yellow Orch. Started coming back in with the transparent colors, the raw umber, the dark brown, and just started getting different shades going. And just kept going back and forth. Make sure you hit all the lines in the floor and the tiles. A lot of detail. That was done with dark brown, transparent. And then also some transparent black. Another one of my favorite colors. you got to make sure you use that. And then what I like to uh, do is after I looked at it, I liked what it, I had going. But then I came back in with some rotten tooth tan. Which is also from the uh, Badger. Which is... Uh, this color and I just kind of missed it the centers of each tile just in the centers you want to have a nice little area there that kind of shows the color of the tiles in this case but then you can bring it back down with the transparent black the raw umber and the transparent dark brown and that was all I did with the floor all around the base of the flooring I just uh, shot that with the transparent black over the black then that finished off the flooring now for the glass, uh, went many different ways. Started out originally with uh, neutral gray, didn't like it. Then I decided to go a whole different way. 
So what I did with that is I enlisted this uh, turned ghost white. Shot each piece of the glass with that. In the mirror also, same thing. And then what I did is I came in with the natural color for me to shade white is transparent Payne's gray. Then I just started hitting all the lines. There's like little pieces of the brokenness in each piece of glass. I would just shade with that and also hit all the outer edges of the glass. You know, just to kind of give it a natural shading. Just kind of follow the glass. Anywhere you see splits in the glass, anywhere on the outside of the glass, hit it with that transparent Payne's gray. Then I got an idea. I enlisted this uh, iridescent blue and I lightly missed it over the glass to give it like a different look. I just shot all the areas of it with the iridescent blue. And it just gives it a nice little glow, I guess is the best way to say it. It just gives it a glow. And then I come back in obviously after that with the uh, ghost white and begin um, just hitting the centers of it just so I can build them colors back up a little bit so you can still see the white which in this case simulates the glass. And that's all I did with the uh, glass. But the uh, iridescent blue kind of gave it a whole different hue and kind of made it pop a little bit. Now up to the mirror itself, I listed a couple different colors for that. I came in with the brown, which I must have put over here. Yeah, the road rash brown. And I just shot the whole framing all the way around. Then it was basically just coming in with the transparent dark brown and uh, doing all the shading and just kept going back and forth with those colors until I got the look that I was trying to achieve in my mind. The nails, there's little nails on the bottom of these feet for the base of the mirror and those I basically enlisted the rotten tooth tan and just hit all those areas with that and then shaded it with the uh, transparent dark brown. And that was the mirror. Just kind of go back and forth with the process transparent dark brown, come back in with your original color you choose, which in my case was the road rash brown. So now you have the base and the mirror done. On to the figures. Over the black uh, for the Wolfman, for his shirt we use the uh, dark red from Garage US Colors and begin just uh, hitting it, going completely over all the areas with it, over the black. Then I came in with the transparent black, started shading all the crevices. Everywhere that you see crevices in the shirt and the sculpt that Steve did, just kind of shade it in with that transparent black. Then come back in with your dark red or whatever color you choose to use for a shirt and just start hitting all the highlights of the shirt. Just different areas to give it that fold that when you look at fabric you'll see this gray but then you see like a lighter gray or like a black just because of the way the light reflects. And that's what you're trying to simulate on this, on doing a model kit. And that was it with the shirt. Just back and forth till I got what I was looking for. Now when you go to his pants, I enlisted uh, Bleach Bone Tan from the Freak Flex, uh, Flex Badger line. And just start airbrushing his pants. Again, like the shirt, you just spray all over. And then you come back in and start your shading with that and I used transparent raw umber and started shading in all the uh, shadowing for his pants. Everywhere there's a crevice or again the folds like the shirt just hit it with the transparent raw umber and then you start building up your shadows come back in with your original color and just start hitting all the highlights, all the folds. Anywhere there's tops, the back of his butt area and the pockets down along the cuffs of his pants you just come back in with your original color and just kind of hit those areas a little bit uh, heavier. Then what I like to do is bring out my transparent black and do the waltz. If you watch my videos, one, two, three, just kind of hit it. Just to, you know, quiet it a little bit. Don't be afraid if you get out of control, come back in with your colors and just start building again. His belt, you don't see a whole lot of his belt, but that I just did uh, straight up black, but I used my metallic black so it would look a little bit different and kind of just stand out a little bit but not overpower it. Once you dull coat that, you don't see the metallic. Now for his uh, skin on the Wolfman, for his hands and his face, I brought out uh, some couple colors from Garage US Colors. Medium African Flesh 
and light African flesh. And basically I started out with a medium flesh, shot all the areas of his face, his hands, you know, the palms, anywhere there's flesh on him, his feet, hit it with that. Then I come in with uh, transparent dark brown and start uh, doing some shadowing on the folds of his skin. Then you come back in with the light African flush and just hit all the highlights, top of the cheeks, top of the nose, palms, top of the fingers, anywhere that you would see it above his lips, uh, nose below it, just those little two areas, chin, and just kind of hit it with that. And then it's basically just shadowing, going back in with the transparent black, transparent dark brown, and get the look that you're looking for. Same with his ears. And then of course I come in with uh, some transparent Mars red and just hit below his eyes on each side. Hit his lips with that transparent Mars red. Again, that's from the uh, Garage US Colors, which is this color. And it just gives you a nice starting point to start building some red for that distressed look. So a back and forth process, hit his mouth area a little bit heavier with that. Just inside the mouth, the tongue, which I came in with, that transparent Mars Red hit it a little heavier. His teeth was all hand brushed with rotten tooth tan. And then you kind of just start making that dirty and that up with transparent raw umber, transparent dark brown to get the look you want. Same with his nails, same treatment. Uh, you want to use that rotten tooth tan and shade as you wish with transparent dark brown, dirty him up. I'm sure he didn't take care of himself. And then um, up for his eyes, I always like to uh, come in with that transparent Mars red and get that color on the eye. And you always want to do that after you get your base color of the eye. In this case was bleach bone tan for his uh, eye color. And then I came in uh, with the black and there's uh, did a pupil. There's no pupil in this. You create where you want them. Uh, took my time, made the circle. Then I enlisted uh, Freak Flex Got Ill Green and I used that for his eye color. Just kind of put that in with a real fine brush. Always leave the hint of black. Do that in a couple times. Do it light coats. And then of course you come in with your pupil and dot it. My toothpick technique, I tried it, didn't get what I liked, had to wipe it off. So I brought out my really uh, finest regular brush I had and practiced a technique that when you're with an airbrush, I just held my hand, had them laying down on the table with a light on them, and I just kind of did a little, little circle. Took a couple times, but hey, you know, just kind of wipe it off, start again. And when I got what I liked, I called it done. Just accented a little bit more of that Mars red on the bottom of his eye, and his face was done. Now for his hair, I just enlisted this cream coat, dark brown, and I just uh, started dry brushing all his fur. Everywhere there's fur, just hit it with the dry brush. Dry brushing dream, just going on all over it and getting that hair to stand out. And then what I did is came back in with the transparent black and just misted it over just to kind of bring it down a little bit so it wasn't too stark. You can always quiet a dry brush down with whatever color you're doing or whatever project. Just bring in like a transparent color, tone it down, build your color back up. And that was the Wolfman. Last but not least is uh, Mr. Larry Talbot. And for him, uh, over the black for his suit, I came in with uh, Garage US Rich Brown. And just had a field day and started airbrushing his whole suit with that brown. Come in then with transparent uh, dark brown and started shading it, bringing it down. And just again, following the sculpts and all the folds that Steve has. And anywhere there's a fold, build your shadow. And I use that uh, color to just keep going, shadowing it down, coming back in with the rich brown, hitting just the highlights of his suit, collar area. Any highlight, hit it with it. Folds in his pants, a little heavier on the cuffs of his pants at the bottom by his feet. And then I kind of take my transparent black, miss it over the whole thing to quiet it down. And then the process of just shading with the transparent dark brown, highlighting with the rich brown, taming it down with the transparent black, it's a process. And then I came in with 
the rich brown and just kind of hit it heavier with a regular brush on all the buttons. And then again, a little mist of the transparent black quiets it down, but you can see a little bit of a contrast. His uh, feet on this, uh, his shoes, I'm sorry, I just uh, enlisted back and forth with transparents over the black, transparent dark brown, and just went back and forth, back and forth until I got the look I wanted. I just thought I wanted to keep it basic, but yet you could see a difference in it. His uh, cane, um, I used this uh, nice color from the Freak Flex uh, Silver Bullet, good movie, and I just airbrushed that over the black, then I came back in with some silver from the Delta Cream Coat and just hit dry brush a little highlights. For his cane, uh, just came in with that um, brown, rich brown, hit it with that, and just came in with transparent dark brown, transparent black, just worked it back and forth. Now for the skin on uh, Larry, I enlisted my flesh colors that I love so much from the Reaper Master Series talked about these before. You have tan skin, you have tan highlights, and you have tan shadow. Start out with your tan skin and just begin uh, hitting all all this flesh tones. Then the process begins. You come in with the tan shadow, of course sit everywhere there's shadows. Then you come back in with the uh, tan highlight at all the highlight areas like on the wolfman, cheeks, nose, above the lips, the chin, fingers, uh, knuckles, palms, anywhere there's highlights, you come in with your lightest color, build those highlights. Then the trick I like doing is I always come in with a brown pastel and I start uh, hitting hard with the lines by the hair. Uh, anywhere there's a crack or a crevice, I come back in and I hit that with that pastel. Work it in, work it in, work it in. And then what I like to do is I get a, like a, sometimes it's a little lighter of a brown and I take that pastel and I move it around the whole face. Just kind of tone it down, blow it off, tone it down, blow it off. And then come back in with your colors. You, you'll see, you'll play around till you get the highlight that you're looking for. But that pastel kind of just blends everything in with the brown over the flesh and just gives it a, the look that you see. I mean, it just gives it a nice finished look. His lips and again below his eyes, same treatment as uh, his counterpart, the Wolfman, transparent Mars red, airbrushed below, lips, and then you just kind of go over it real lightly with that um, tanned uh, flesh tone, the shadow if you will. I thin that way down, just a couple little areas to over it and then a real one, two, three waltz, mist it over the whole thing, ties it together. Eyes, bleach bone tan, and then it was just a matter of playing around with the different colors for um, his eye color. You just pick whatever eye color you want on him. I just used like a lighter brown for this. Come in with the same process as the Wolfman. Finish the eye off. Called it done. Now for his hair, uh, over the black, I just airbrushed the transparent dark brown. And just went back and forth transparent black over that back and forth back and forth and called it done it's kind of like a brownish black but it gives it a nice contrast from the face to the hair then you can come back in and make sure you work that hairline just kind of blend everything together that was a lot of pastel work and now last but not least we're going to look at his shirt uh, shirt was uh, just painted straight up with the rotten tooth tan and then uh, for his tie, I just basically enlisted this uh, Hammer Horror uh, Red from the Badger Freak Flex line. And just hand painted that in. Then I just kind of missed it over lightly with the trans black to kind of bring it down a little bit. And that is the newest, one of the new kits from Killer Kits. I don't know if he really calls it a name. For me, it's uh, Talbot facing his alter ego, the Wolfman. Just a beautiful kit, a must-have for your collection. I encourage you to reach out to Dave. I'll have his uh, contact information. He's a great guy, top-notch service. Believe it or not, it, it's like magic. It comes from England to you in three, four days. I don't get it. But Dave, you rock. Steve Thompson, boom. You get the boom today. Great job. 
So thanks for stopping in today to Talking Models and watching this episode. Stay tuned for more to come on this channel. I think we're going to be doing uh, one down the pike here real soon on the workbench. And uh, after this one uploads, we'll probably shift in and just do that real quick on the importance of your workbench, your airbrushes, how things are set up. And then we're going to move into black heart models and take a look at their wall hangers. Great stuff. Way to go, George. So once again, thanks for stopping in. Have a great day and may God bless.